Good morning. God bless you. Um, let's open in prayer. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Glory and honor and praise for today, Father. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified in what we say, what we think, and what we do, Lord. Bring you glory. May it bring you glory. Ask, Father, that you would speak this word that you've given me, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just completely just fill me, Lord Jesus. Just fill me. The Holy Spirit, just fill me. And just speak forth the, the word that you have given me this day, Father. I know it's so vitally important, Father, so I pray that your body receive it, that you would just bind all the dumb, deaf spirits that would cause a person not to be able to hear, Father. And I rebuke the spirit of confusion also, Father, off the body of Christ, that they would get your word, that they would receive this word, and that they would understand this word. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, all night long, the Lord kept saying, the life is in the blood, the life is in the blood, you know, so... Um, I had had a, um, a polyp, I still do, that's growing, and uh, it had cut off the um, circulation in my hand. I wasn't able to use my left hand or my left arm very well, and it would keep going numb. And the swelling of this um, polyp, is what the Lord called it, um, had spread into my glands, and now um, my glands are swollen. And when I had asked, asked for prayer and had people pray for me and over me, um, they would always get the same thing, that this isn't unto death, that this isn't cancer, this is just um, something the Lord's taking you through, you know. And uh, one friend said that it was, um, you know, that it reminded her of, of Paul and his thorn in the flesh, you know. And I would always think about Ezekiel laying on his side for 365 days on one side, or however many days, I don't remember, but he would lay on each side and eat twice a day and, you know, not be able to move. And, and Father had told me at the beginning of this, about nine months ago, when I first uh, noticed that I had um, a lump that was growing in my body, I was, at first I was like, well, what is this about, you know, because I eat healthy and I don't eat any food that has chemicals or anything in it, you know, and, and the Lord just kept giving me different analogies uh, all along about what this, sorry, <laughs> my nose is tickling, about what this meant, but as it got bigger, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it was making it so I couldn't sleep, I, uh, I've been nine months without a really good night's sleep, you know, and I was like, oh, what is this, you know, I can lay hands on other people and they're healed, but I'm not, you know, and what is he trying to teach me, and I would go back to James uh, chapter one, count it all joy, you know, in your tribulations, you know, and I was like, oh man, you know, this is terrible, but I wasn't stressed. I knew that it was for a purpose, and so, and not knowing what it was, I was curious, and then I think last night he put it together for me, so praise the Lord. Anyway, so last night, uh, almost all night, he kept saying the life is in the blood, and he said that, um, the polyp had pressed against an artery that was stopping the blood flow to my hand and that's why my hand was going numb. So I wrote down this morning what he showed me and I want to share it with you. When the blood cannot reach a part of the body, that part of the body begins to die. The power is in the blood and life is in the blood. <clears throat> when the blood that we are to drink which spiritually speaking, does not reach all parts of the body due to sin, death begins to take over. When a toxin enters the body, a toxin being a false teaching, customs, traditions of men, or sin, when a toxin enters the body, it can swell and it can grow and press against the artery or the flow that is pumping the blood, the life, through the body. Without the heart, which is Christ, the blood could not flow to the whole body. Sin cuts off the flow of the power, and the body, the church, begins to die. We're going to look at some verses that talk about life is in the blood. And we're going to go first to Leviticus 17.11. Leviticus 17.11. <clears throat> for the life is in the blood. I have given it for you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life which it represents. And we'll go to Deuteronomy 12, 23. 
chapter 12, verse 23, only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life, and you may not eat the life with the flesh. It's talking about animals and, and what you can eat. Okay, the blood makes atonement. The blood, the blood is the payment for the sin. We're going to now go to um, John 6, 54, <clears throat> where Jesus spoke of drinking his blood. John 6, 54. This video you'll want to listen to a few times uh, so you get the first part of what he was saying there. John 6, I'm going to read verses 54 through 56. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. For my flesh is true and genuine food, and my blood is true and genuine drink. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood dwells continually in me, and I in like manner dwell continually in him. Drinking the blood, the life is in the blood. Jesus is the life. Without the blood in the body, the body begins to die. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians <clears throat> Uh, chapter 11, verse 25. When he was doing the Lord's Supper, when we call the Lord's Supper, when he was breaking the bread, this is one of the verses um, that many of you have heard many times in your church, I'm sure, when you take communion. But in 1 Corinthians 11, 25, it says, Similar, Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the cup also, saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to call affectionately to remembrance. So he, what he says here is this cup is the new covenant. The blood, the drinking of the blood is the new covenant. In the old covenant, under the Old Testament law, uh, an animal had to be slain and sacrificed and the blood sprinkled upon the people. In the New Testament, Jesus was the lamb, the offering, the sacrifice that was slain for us. And it's his blood that cleanses us. Okay, last verse, Hebrews 10, 19. This is very, very short, uh, but there's a lot here. Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have full freedom and confidence to enter into the Holy of Holies by the power and virtue in the blood of Jesus. It's the blood that makes it possible for us to enter into his presence and to enter into the Holy of Holies. The life is in the blood. Without the blood of Jesus... You have no life. The church of Christ has no life. The body of Christ, the Lord show me, is full of toxins, full of infection, and it's dying uh, piece by piece, member by member. You know, we're many members in one body. We're, some of us are arms and some of us are legs, aren't we? We're all part of the body of Christ, part of the body of Christ. And um, I don't think we get that, that we're part of his body. And that our body is his temple where he dwells. And there's many bodies that have accepted the traditions of men, the toxins, and they're spiritually dead. And they're dying. And they can't hear the word of God. What happens when a person doesn't get blood or oxygen to the brain, the brain can't function. And the person can get dizzy. That's what happens when you stand up too fast. You can get dizzy, you can get lightheaded, and you can get confused. And that's what's happened in the body of Christ. Many are confused, and they're just, they're not getting it. I'm going to read one more time what I read at the beginning. The life is in the blood. When the blood cannot reach a part of the body, that part of the body begins to die. The power is in the blood, and life is in the blood. When the blood that we are to drink does not reach all parts of the body due to sin, death begins to take over. When a toxin, a false teaching, customs, traditions of men uh, take over, uh, I'm sorry, when a, a toxin, which is false teaching or a custom or traditions of man, enters the body, it can swell and grow and press against the artery, against the flow that is pumping the blood. Sometimes the flow is a, is a brother or sister in Christ. Many times it's a prophet in the church. And the customs and traditions and lies that people have believed press against that prophet. And that prophet can't speak the life-giving blood to the church. 
without the heart, which is Christ, the blood could not flow to the whole body. Sin cuts off the flow and the power, and the church, the body of Christ, can begin to die. Many are dying spiritually. Many have sat in the church for many, many years, and they have no life. It's very important that we understand about the blood of Jesus. The blood is the new covenant. <laughs> the blood is the blood is precious. The precious blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes us white as snow. It makes it possible for us to enter into his kingdom. Enter into the Holy of Holies. The blood of Jesus, because he sees us, is cleansed by the blood. The blood makes us makes us clean and cleanses us. And in the church, the blood isn't even spoken about, you know. And that's a bad thing when the blood's not spoken about. When the crucifixion's not spoken about. When sin's not spoken about. When those things aren't talked about. It's very important that we understand the full word of God and the full counsel of God. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day in Jesus. And I'm going to be fine. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. God bless you.